What's up, people? In this video, we are going to do this Vitruvian physique. Um, okay, yeah, Vitruvian physique. We'll do this. Um, Vitruvian man is it's Leonardo da Vinci's like perfect. Hey man, guys, right? welcome back to my. Hmm. Okay. Um. What do we got here? The end of bulk. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I read somewhere that shirtless selfies, or sorry, shirtless pics in the thumbnail get more clicks. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Anyway, how I eat to build muscle. I guess we'll just watch this one. Yeah, how I eat to build muscle. Why not? <laughs> the lateral build lifter's dilemma. That's pretty funny. Uh, okay, let's watch this. If you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers, let me know. Leave me a comment. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Return Physique. Thank you for stopping by. For what, as I'm sure many of you have already noticed, is kind of a weird format to the video. Like, what's with this up and down kind of vertical thing. I mean, aren't I usually like that? Does that feel a little bit more familiar? Today, I want to try out something a little bit, a little bit new. We're going to be doing this less of like a vlog and more of like an actual informational video, doing a little bit almost like a split screen side by side analysis. Pretty much by the end of this, you'll have a very good understanding of what a typical day of bulking for me looks like. We first need to establish essentially the foundation, the groundwork for what my diet uh, is actually based off. And there are three things that I look at. Number one is protein intake. My current goal is 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. I know that a lot of people are, you know, they're gonna say like, oh, but Igor, there's one study out of a thousand so that you should go higher towards one or 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight and some of the vegans out there who can't get as much protein they're a little bit more towards the opposite side of the spectrum they're gonna say like oh Igor but I know this one bodybuilder who eats like 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight and he looks fine in fact he looks better than you and it's like this this spectrum it's, it's exactly as it is it's a spectrum there's so many different pieces of scientific evidence or anecdotal evidence of high protein intakes low protein intakes there is no one magic number I wish there was trust me all right so general rule of thumb this is nothing really to do with anything that he said but like any any time if if you're going to take if you're like wondering because the dude's russian i think or or ukrainian or something his name's igor he's got a little bit of an accent i'm, I'm gonna say i want to say ukrainian because ukrainians are like the nice russians he seems very nice i don't know let's take a look here where's homie from doesn't say uh okay whatever i'll look it up later anyway russian ukrainian whatever it's all kind of the same um always take fitness advice from those guys oh my god the fucking fitness like russia is like way 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 ahead or i don't know if they're way ahead but like b like their physical fitness um program i guess uh i don't want to say their science is like way ahead of the united states but like it kind of is um as evidenced by like what they teach in schools like the government sponsored like fitness shit in russia produces like athletes you know what i mean they're not like no offense russia russian people who are watching this like n i'm not saying they're like a better country the best country in the world definitely not it's definitely a ton of fucked up shit that goes on in there but in terms of like fitness they're, they're like very definitely to be listened to um so like and i know this guy he's, he's not like some fucking russian scientist or anything but just in general right like always generally a pretty good idea to take advice from a Russian person when they're talking about fitness. Just a general rule of thumb that I've noticed. Also, number two, um, this guy, he's a physique competitor. So like a lot of the stuff that I recommend when I talk about like general fitness and how to be healthy and OMAD and fucking eating meat and blah, 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 not counting your calories, that, that applies less to fitness competitors because these guys are doing something, they're, they're trying to achieve a very specific look, which most of the time involves putting on a lot more muscle than your average person would want to put on, which is going to be easier. I'm assuming this guy does five meals a day. Like maybe he does like intermittent fasting, which to him is like basically like eating three meals a day or five meals a day within eight hours or something. It's the same shit, just in a shorter eating window. Um, so I'm kind of interested as to what he's got to say. Uh, eight grams per pound of body weight. What is that? So if you're like 180 pounds, four fifths is like six. I'm like really testing myself here. Um, I don't know. I just woke up. I can't do this shit right now. I don't know. Uh, 
150? Whatever. Say 150 grams of protein a day. It's not that much. 140? Whatever. Um, yeah. So, not, not so much. Um, but I'm kind of interested in what he's got to say. I mean, I have looked, it doesn't exist. But based on uh, the majority of the evidence that I have seen and my personal experience, 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight when you are bulking is more than enough. And for me at 200 pounds, that comes out to 160. That's pretty much my ceiling. I try to get, not my ceiling, my floor. I try to get at least 160 at minimum, and then my ceiling is usually 200. Can I go more than that? Yeah, but to be honest, I just don't want to. I'm not a huge fan of sitting there shoveling down chicken breast. All right, factor number two, calories and specifically calorie surplus. Usually I'm aiming between 300 to 500 calorie uh, surplus. It's more of a range. This is above what you would consider a lean bulk, but it's definitely significantly below what would be considered a dirty bulk. It's kind of like uh, in between those two, a regular bulk, something which I try to aim for. I believe nobody out there should be doing a dirty bulk because honestly, I think the marginal be benefit to increase calories beyond something like a 500 calorie surplus, is just not worth it. And finally, the third thing that I look at, servings of fruits and vegetables. And my current target is six at minimum. Ideally, if I can go for eight, nine, 10, 300, I don't care, that would be great. But six is an absolute, uh, it's the floor. That's like the minimum. Also, for those of you wondering where I actually got this number from, they actually have done studies. Uh, in particular, there's one uh, meta-analysis where they actually looked at the correlation between fruits and vegetable intake and all causes of mortality, especially Especially diseases, primarily cardiovascular disease, and they actually found a dose-dependent inverse relationship between uh, likelihood of mortality or death and fruit and vegetable intake. So you know that thing that your parents always told you, like Billy, you gotta eat your vegetables. It's like, oh, holy shit, they're. All right, so maybe I spoke too soon. No, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't seen what the guy looks like. Maybe I, I let my like love of fucking Russian culture like get the better of me there. Um, like quoting a study that says like people die less when they eat fruits and vegetables. Therefore, I eat six servings a day. Like. You know, might be some other variables in there, like people who eat fruits and vegetables just have healthier habits overall, or probably eat less processed food, which I think is really what that comes from. Because vegetables and fruits, those are like a placeholder food for that what you were where most actually like normal people would probably just be consuming processed foods. So like it, it's not it's one of these things. It's like if if your choice is fruits and vegetables or like fucking ego waffles with like fake maple syrup, then yeah, okay, fruits and vegetables. But is that necessary on a regular bulk? I don't think so. Um, totally unnecessary, actually, on a regular bulk, I think, uh, in my opinion, is what I mean. Also, um, in terms of, like, I, I don't... So, again, like I said, I'm not a physique competitor, and a lot of the stuff that I say is not advice for physique competitors, because, like I said, those guys need to put on, generally, like, a, a fair, fairly large amount of muscle. I mean, I, I have a decent amount of muscle, too. Probably... I would need to change things up if I wanted to like compete even at like the lowest level. Um, but I, I don't, so again, like w what I say obviously is, is not really applicable to him, but I'm saying anyway, this whole like bulking thing, I think it's totally unnecessary. And I think it's further unnecessary to bulk for extended periods of time to eat a surplus of 500 calories a day. I think that's just unnecessary. I think what, because what, number one, you're going to get fat. It's like, what's the point? Okay, you got fat, you put on a little bit of muscle. But I think it's it's much, it would be much better to do, like, consider it like a mini bulk in a mini cut, right? So for example, let's say, wh while doing OMAD. Okay, I haven't actually tested this per se. This is really just based more on my own experience. But I, um, I've kind of tested like a little bit, but unintentionally, just because this is kind of how I live. So basically what I mean by that is where what you're going to do is let's say you want to bulk for a few days, right? As you train a little bit harder, you eat a little bit more, maybe you eat twice a day, you eat two, maybe even three meals a day, and you are eating more calories, but you're not tracking your calories because I think that's fucking stupid. You just eat more of the foods that you should be eating, meat and eggs, like straight up, like <laughs> what else are you going to bulk on, you know? Um, and then after that, after you've like put on a little bit of muscle and maybe gained a little bit of fat, you do like a cut for a day or two. Honestly, I think the best way to cut would just to be fast for like 48 hours and then just do it again, right? Um, that's, that's how I would do it. I obviously, I don't have as much experience with that as this guy seems to have with his system. So like, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, I just think that like, I, I, I just would not want to get fat for three months. Like for what? Put on like a, a little, a couple extra pounds of muscle. Again, like I said, I'm not a physique competitor. So like, you know. Actually right. Also, guys, before we get into the food, the good stuff, I just want to let you know that my overall nutrition strategy is documented in my course, The Skinny Fat Solution. I launched it a few months ago, and based on the feedback I've been hearing from you guys, out of everything I've ever made, this is definitely what I'm most proud of. For the first time since its launch, I'm going to be putting it on sale at 30% off, but only for the next 72 hours. It's a bundle, so you're going to get an online course, a physical book, two downloadable Excel tools, and exclusive videos from me that you're not going to get anywhere else. Plus, I have a 15-day, 100% no questions asked money back guarantee, so you can get it completely risk-free. But that's enough of that. Let's get into the good stuff.
Okay, first meal of the day. For my main protein source, I'm eating eggs. And yes, I know, very creative. But there are a couple reasons why I really do think it's an amazing protein source, and I'll get into those in a minute. Usually what I do is I go with one whole egg and then four egg whites. Now, I know that this can open up a can of worms with regards to the never-ending debate as to whether or not eggs are bad for you or not. Like, people on one side, usually the vegans, let's be honest, are saying that eggs are absolutely poison and they're going to kill you, and the cholesterol is super high and it's directly you know, related to cardiovascular disease. And then people on the other side of the spectrum are saying, no, it's fine, it's kind of an over-exaggeration. And although the cholesterol content is somewhat high in eggs, it's mostly the good kind of cholesterol that's HDL, not LDL. And honestly, to cover this topic entirely, I think I would need like a full separate 30 minute video. So in the meantime, guys, just understand that although I am using eggs as my main protein source, 80% of it, four out of five, is just egg whites. Also, eggs, like beyond any debate, are literally one of the best protein sources on the planet. If you actually look at the PDCAAS score, and yes, that is a mouthful, uh, this scoring system is a measurement of protein quality in terms of amino acid profile and digestibility. Eggs are at the very top of the list above every single other protein source, aside from supplements like whey and soy protein isolate, which come in tied for first place. Next up is more super creative breakfast ideas. I am doing oatmeal butts. It may be a little creative in terms of how I actually prepare it, so guys, pay attention. What I'm actually doing is combining two kinds of oatmeal, two different kinds of oatmeal together. I'm using one of those Quaker instant oatmeals. Uh, you know, like those instant kind of quick packets you kind of just add like a little bit of boiling water and it's done or you stick it in the microwave for 60 seconds my go-to is peaches and cream flavor that's my personal favorite but what i'm actually doing is combining it with some raw you know quote unquote healthier uh basic unprocessed large flake oats this way uh the kind of flavor from the peaches and cream instant oatmeal kind of mixes in with the whole thing and then it all ends up tasting fantastic despite the fact that the actual sugar content isn't that high and also these days i'm really trying to focus on uh, eating a diet which although it's high in carbohydrates it's mostly coming from healthier sources uh with less added processed you know refined sugars and then to further increase my carb intake even more because hashtag bulk life, I'm adding in about a handful uh, of raisins. In this case, it comes out to around 40 grams. And then on the side for a beverage, these days I'm actually doing coconut water as opposed to regular basic water. It just, it tastes so good. It's so refreshing. It's, you know, just slightly sweet. And on top of it, it adds an additional 10 to 15 grams of natural carbohydrates, 60 to 70 calories. And then finally, the last piece of my breakfast, I just usually have a banana on the side just to add at least one serving of fruits or vegetables. Overall, my final count for my meal, this comes out to approximately 31 grams of protein, which isn't too high, but it's very nice light meal, which I usually, I prefer this over like a really big massive heavy meal because that's going to put me into a food coma, that's going to slow me down, and in the mornings when I'm working out, I'm really being really productive with business stuff, that's the last thing I need. And overall, this is around 700, 760 to be specific uh, calories with one or two servings of fruits and vegetables. Pretty damn, uh, pretty damn good breakfast. Obviously, due to flexible dieting, I might sub foods in and out, but for the most part, guys, what you were seeing, these are my absolute breakfast staples on a daily basis. Um... I don't know. Honestly, I think I'm just so used to eating OMAD that like even, even that I'm like imagining myself eating that in the morning just seems like a lot. Like I, I would need to like take a nap <laughs> after eating that, um, regarding and uh, okay. So I'm going to preface the rest of this two minutes of me talking by, uh, this is typical of like physique competitors where they'll have egg whites instead of eggs. Cause it's just focusing more on the protein instead of the fat, um, and eating many small meals throughout the day. So like, again, you know, if, if you're a physique competitor, if you actually are, then, um, because I, I'm assuming that's why he's bulking, right? Because he's going to compete. He's not, or is he just bulking for fun? If, if he's just bulking for fun as like an attempt to like get into better shape. Okay. But I, I don't like, and uh, somebody told me this guy's a model. So if he's a mo he needs to like put on muscle for like a photo shoot or something. Okay. But other, other than those two reasons, I don't think there's any reason to ever bulk and cut like if you're just looking for like general health I, I think it's totally unnecessary um and if you're just kind of going for your appearance I, I guess if for some reason you just like don't mind being kind of fat six months out of the year when you're bulking as opposed to six months out of the year when you're lean and a little bit bigger I guess you can do it but anyway regarding the specific food choice I personally prefer to eat the actual eggs um but again like I said he wants to keep his protein high his fat low because he's I'm it's like competing or something i don't really know um there was a study where they gave 30 eggs a day they fed 30 eggs a day to burn victims to see how they would recover and they measured their cholesterol levels afterwards and they were fine they didn't show any increase in like the bad cholesterol so like in terms of eating eggs like uh, you know according to that one study you can eat up to 30 eggs a day and you'll be fine also these people were burn victims so like I guess you have to factor that into it somehow. Like, was the fact that their body was undergoing some like crazy healing process, did that somehow have an effect on their cholesterol levels? Maybe that's, it's possible. I doubt it, but it, it is possible because that's that's just something you should consider when you're when you're thinking of that. I don't think so, but you know, like I said, should be considered. Um, what else? Opening a pack of like powdered sugar oatmeal, like obviously product placement. Um, clearly product placement like if you're going to eat oatmeal don't eat like the pre-packaged like sugary shit 
if if your goal is like health, right? Better to like have, okay, so at least you saw what he did. Like, honestly, I don't think he does that really to tell you the truth. I think what he really does is he just eats like the regular oatmeal and just fucking put in that um, instant oatmeal's like product placement probably because like they paid him a bunch of money to do so. Um, whatever, make your money, do your thing. Um, if you do want to have oatmeal, at, at least he added water uh, instead of like fucking fake almond milk or something. Um yeah, I think oatmeal and water, like plain water, is fine to eat for breakfast if I do decide to have breakfast. Sometimes I'll go through periods where I have breakfast. What I'll do is I'll have oatmeal mixed with water, um, and then I'll add sometimes a little, either like a little bit of butter um, and salt, which I, I like for some reason, or butter and like um, sugar, like a, a ton, half a spoon of sugar and some cinnamon. It's fucking amazing. Um, and um, yeah. Um, the raisins, not crazy about it, but like, okay, like you're bulking, I guess. Coconut water, like, okay, you're bulking, I guess. Also, clearly product placement. Um, so, I mean, we could drink coconut water instead of regular water. Like, I, I guess you're bulking, okay. But uh, for if you don't do that, like, all this, it's just, it's just unnecessary, all this stuff. But whatever, you're bulking, fine. <laughs> All right, second meal of the day. This one was around 2 p.m. and was immediately after my workout serving as my post-workout meal. Here the name of the game is speed and convenience. And I'm happy to say that although this meal is fairly basic, it's also super easy and relatively inexpensive to prepare. My main carb source is one of these microwavable Uncle Ben's Express rice bags, which I'm absolutely loving right now because it costs like three bucks. It gives you a massive amount, which is probably enough for two servings or one really big one if you're trying to pack on the calories like me. And most importantly, it tastes friggin' great, which is so crucial when bulking. Trust me, I've been that guy eating plain white rice with a dribble of soy sauce out of a sad little Tupperware container in the corner of the room while everyone else enjoys the house party and you promise you try to have a good time but you can't because the music is too loud and you gotta get your calories in and there's a guy here with bigger calves than me and it's not my fault because I train them so hard and I try high volume but it still isn't working and our legs look like chicken legs and goddamn it mother piece of shit, stupid ass calf raise my ass mother for my vegetable source, I usually have a full avocado as it's a fantastic way to get a ton of super healthy polyunsaturated fats. Plus, it's surprisingly high in fiber, and if big enough, it actually counts as two full servings of vegetables. And finally, the main protein source I usually go for is chicken breast, which I gotta admit, it does sound a bit boring and cliche, you know, the, the usual bodybuilding trope, but I've actually found a way to make it taste pretty damn good using just a few seasonings, which I found at my local Walmart for, honestly, I think it was like three, maybe four bucks each. However, sometimes when I do get bored of chicken, again, guys, flexible dieting, you can sub foods in and out as long as they generally, you know, conform to your uh, calorie and macronutrient targets, it's totally okay. Sometimes I switch to steak specifically. It's a cut called Eye of Round, which I personally found to be pretty high in terms of its protein to fat ratio, which is something I look for uh, when consuming red meat. And on the side, I usually have a few servings of ketchup because like I said, yeah, palate of a nine-year-old. All of this comes up to a whopping 68 grams of protein, 960 calories. Again, that rice really does help and one to two servings of vegetables. Okay, um, again, this guy, this guy must be crushing it with fucking product placement. Like all, all those casual mentions of all these brands, like, man. Imagine how much they're paying him to get mentioned in his fucking YouTube video. Like, a lot. Like, thousands each. There's, there's already been coconut water, Quaker Oats. They're not, you know, they're not cheap. Uh, Quaker Oats, coconut water, whatever that was, and Uncle Ben's rice. Holy shit, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, come on, realistically. And, okay, fine. He, he, like, I understand how he pitched the rice. Like, eating white rice in at the party in the corner. And there's a guy with bigger calves than me. It's funny. This guy for sure browses 4chan or like whoever if somebody like writes his script and it's like not him anymore because he's already like so big Al although i think he is um I, I think he he does it on his own seems seems kind of like to suit his personality but homie definitely is on on the fit board for sure um yeah okay so like again was it rice um chicken what was the other thing i already forgot what the other thing was whatever yeah not bad you know natural food good for him I, again, like I said, I just don't like to eat several meals throughout the day and rice. I'm not crazy about it. I mean, I do eat it. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, rice in a plastic bag. You know, I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. It's good. It's natural. All right. These days for my snacks, I personally have been loving berries as they're an easy way to get around 20 to 30 grams of natural carbohydrates and they really help crush that sweet tooth, that sweet craving you get. That way I don't end up eating candy or chocolate or other bullshit like that. Uh, here I'm going with half a container of blackberries and golden berries. And I've actually never seen these or even knew what they existed. Like what the hell is golden berries? I've never heard of these up until around a year ago when my local grocery store started selling them. And I mean, I am absolutely falling in love with them. They taste kind of like blueberries except a little bit more sour. Again, these days I really am trying to the best of my ability to avoid processed added sugars, not due to any reasons related to fitness since from a flexible dieting standpoint, a carb is a carb regardless 
regardless of the source, whether it came from oatmeal or straight up sugar found in Coca-Cola. However, from a more health related standpoint, there are a multitude of reasons to avoid processed sugar. Uh, one such example, although there are many, is a likely correlation between sugar and acne breakouts. And me being someone who's had problematic skin pretty much my entire life, yeah, this is definitely a big priority for me. Uh, so these days, to the best of my ability, I do try to gravitate a bit more towards uh, more natural sugar, natural dessert options. Overall, this snack comes out to a massive three grams of protein, which I know is tiny, but that's okay. That's not the goal for this specific meal. Uh, 90 calories and two full servings of fruit slash vegetables. Okay, wonderful. He doesn't eat processed sugar. I thought it was interesting what he said about, um, according to flexible dieting, a carb is a carb. Um, that's just, that's a, a very like good reason, a cl like clear sign that flexible dieting is fucking stupid as fuck and like a terrible idea for anybody, right? Eating like your bowl of like golden berries and what were those like uh, blackberries or something? I don't even know what those were. Um, is obviously much different than fucking eating a donut or whatever, or just spooning sugar into your mouth, clearly. Um, so thank God, like, somebody has, like, enough common sense to realize that. Uh, yeah, so good, good. In my experience, when, when I've had fruit, um, I get a little bit, um, call it, like, a, a little bit of a wet look, which basically means, like, you, you kind of, like, I don't know if you, like, retain water or something or, or what it is, but, like, uh, you lose a little bit of definition. You get, like, a little, not necessarily puffier. I think, I think it's retaining water. I'm not sure. Although salt also causes you to retain water, so I'm not really sure what it is. I think just, I, I'm not really sure. It's just, I just know it is, uh, causes, like, a wet look. So, like, if I, if I have fruit, I have to, like, remind myself to have fruit kind of in moderation because I love fruit. I fucking love fruit shakes and fruit. Like, I could, I could eat fruit, like, for every meal all the time. Um, but I notice the next day if I have a lot of fruit, I just, I, I lose a little bit of definition. I don't necessarily perform better either. So, just something to keep in mind. For this one, I actually want to show you guys two different meal options mm -hmm. representing the opposite sides of the spectrum with regards to cost. So option number one, this one is a little bit on the cheap side of the spectrum because this whole meal I'm about to show you can be made for like, what, 10, 12 bucks worth of ingredients and it easily makes two relatively large servings. This is a homemade chicken and potato, I don't know if you want to call it a stew or a slow cook pop, I don't know what the name of it is, but it tastes pretty damn good and it's also relatively clean. In this case, I'm using a slow cooker and this is one of my favorite ways to cook. I highly recommend it. If you don't have one of these, you consider picking one up because they're super cheap. I think it's like 30 or $40 and it makes your life so much simpler. The recipe is as follows. First of all, I start off with a few potatoes usually i go for something like maybe three large ones or four to five medium ones you can use sweet potatoes and i cut these up in two quarters then for the vegetables you can use honestly whatever you want in my case i'm using baby carrots uh green beans and then i finish it off with some sliced uh, white onions then for my protein source i'm going with chicken you could probably use steak or maybe something like pork loin or turkey that all of this works usually i go for three to four chicken breasts depending on size in my case as you guys are seeing here i'm going with three as they're relatively big and then i add one cup of chicken broth uh, i'm using the organic fancy kind because hashtag health and then to top it all off you guys can add whatever sauces or spices uh, you'd like. In my case, because I do like it a little sweet, I'm actually going with three tablespoons worth of honey. Also, pro tip, if you're using the raw honey like me, the one that's kind of hard and waxy, you can stick it in the microwave for about 15 to 20 seconds to liquefy it, and this makes it a lot easier to kind of add in and pour all over your chicken. And guys, that is it. Just throw it all into the slow cooker, turn it on high for three to four hours, or low for about six to seven hours. I personally like to turn it on in the afternoon, and then a few hours later, it's ready for me in the evening when I have dinner. But I also know a lot of people who prepare it in the morning, and then they leave it on low uh, while they're away at work throughout the day. That way, when they get home from work, they have a hot and delicious meal waiting for them the second they walk through the door. Now, obviously, the calories and macros are going to differ depending on which ingredients you select. But the way you guys saw me prepare it in this video, this results in a massive 125 grams of protein, 1140 calories, and a pretty damn big eight servings of vegetables. Now, in my case, I split this with my girlfriend because I can't eat this all myself. I wish I could, but I probably still ate the majority. I'd say like 60%. So my actual macros and calories look like this. Next up, option number two, Chipotle. And yes, yes, I... Man, this guy's crushing it, huh? Chipotle now. Fuck, man. So this one video, he probably made like... I'm I'm assuming well okay so so here's the thing with this product placement it's like if if the video if these brands have to split the product placement with other brands like it's what Chipotle Quaker Oats fucking all this shit they're probably going to pay less overall right but still like I'm sure like mid four figures like this is like homie probably made like twenty grand at least and he has he's not even done yet I'm sure there's another meal fucking for dessert I had you know Weight Watchers low carb whatever. Um, yeah, 20 grand, easy, plus the YouTube ad revenue. I'm jealous. I am super jealous of this. Uh, anyway, whatever. Um, the slow cooker. Okay, so like I've, I've never used a slow cooker. Um, honestly, even a slow cooker is like too much work <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, he's bulking. 
so number one has to spend more money on food right a bunch of chicken breasts all those like potatoes and vegetables and stuff all that stuff is really good honestly like it's it's all natural food potatoes are really good for you carrots are pretty good for you natural raw honey oh my god it might be the first time i've ever seen anybody eat that other than me um amazing like i'll tell you what i like about this guy is that i i haven't seen i don't think i've seen one like bit of processed food in this entire video like I haven't seen actually one, it's not a single piece. So amazing, um, good for him. Chipotle, it's good for you too. It's all natural food. Uh, I guess it's the Uncle Ben's rice process. I don't know, even if it's processed, at least it's, it's fucking rice, you know? Um, yeah, this is this guy, this guy knows how to eat. Again, the only, I guess, whatever issue, very minor, is that I just don't like bulking in general. I think it's dumb. Um, but again, that's th he's he's doing that because of his goal, not just because he like, heard it's good and is doing it you know what i mean so i know this is super cliche and probably the standard meal for like 50 percent of the youtube fitness community but guys there is a good reason for that first of all although it's a bit pricier compared to option number one at almost three times the cost on a dollars per serving basis this meal is awesome because it obviously has zero preparation time and because it's a relatively clean way to get 800 plus calories as opposed to simply stuffing your face with mcdonald's or some other crap my usual go-to is a chicken bowl with guac no cheese and then pretty much all the veggie toppings i can possibly get my hands on overall this comes out to 47 grams of protein 800 calories and approximately two to three servings of vegetables depending on which toppings you select Yo, so I haven't like lived in America for a while. Chipotle's fifteen dollars, or is he saying for the same amount of protein, like price per gram of protein would be fifteen dollars? Is is that what he means? I think that's what he means because I don't think is is Chipotle actually fifteen dollars? I don't is it? I, I, it was not like eight dollars last time I was there. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> And finally, guys, my last meal of the day. This is a high protein peanut butter and jam bagel sandwich, which is an awesome way to get one last, you know, little boost to my protein intake, as well as crush my late night sweet tooth. I start off with a P28 protein bagel. And no, this video is not sponsored by them in any way. I just found these at my local grocery store. And since just one of these has 28 grams of protein, I figured it would be a pretty good way to help just, you know, give a little bit of a top off to my protein intake without having to scarf down more meat. In this case, I am just using half the bagel, not in fear of getting like too many calories or too much protein or anything. I just honestly don't like the taste of all that bread. Then I top it off with two tablespoons of whipped peanut butter and two tablespoons of no sugar added raspberry jam. By the way, this jam, it's a lifesaver uh, when dieting, since it tastes so good on bagels or toast or just about anything when you're craving something sweet, but it's only about 20 calories per spoonful, so you can just layer it on, you know, whatever you're eating, and it's like 50 calories at most. When I'm bulking, it's great. When I'm dieting, it's even better. I definitely do recommend it. And then finally, on the side, I will have about a cup and a half of vanilla-flavored almond milk. So the final calorie and macro counts are as follows. A following dinner option number one, we have 205... Wow, this might actually be the best what I eat in a day video I've ever seen. Like, straight up. Like, this this might actually... And not just, not just in terms of, like, being healthy, but in terms of the food actually looking like it tastes good, right? Like, not like... Who did I watch? An Anfisa. She ate, like, no seasoning at all, like, steamed vegetables and, like, pr chicken and shrimp. It's, like, zero seasoning at all. It's, like, how do you eat that? Um amazing like this this is actually i'm I'm gonna say it this is the best what i eat in a day video i've ever seen out of like all the like random youtubers that i've done like it's very good again like i said i'm not crazy about bulking as like an eating strategy let's call it but in terms of like actual food choice and being healthy and limiting like wow super limited on the processed food also p28 bagels 28 grams of protein in a bagel that's insane i don't know how they do that i wonder how they do that uh, I kind of want to like buy those and eat them. I wonder how much they are. Um, whipped protein, good. Nothing wrong with that. And I never actually I thought that was interesting. Uh, using jam to as like a dessert because jam essentially is uh, as long as it's no sugar added, like it said on the jar. That's a that's a very um, you know because fruit has natural sugar, and if you eat if you eat jam, it's just like eating sugar, <laughs> eating fruit. So that's that's a very interesting dessert idea that actually never occurred to me. So I, I love it. Amazing. Um, and what else? Okay, fine. A little bit of soy milk. All right. Like, or what was it? Almond milk? Not the best, but whatever. Like, that, if that's your dessert, like a fucking high protein bagel with peanut butter and like actual fruit spread. Okay, go ahead, dog. Have your almond milk.
5 grams of protein, 399 carbs, and 63 grams of fat, totaling 2,935 calories. Now, I do want to mention that in all honesty, this is a bit more of a clean day of eating for me uh, than I normally do, since these days I usually do eat out at least one meal per day. Uh, this is actually a bigger reason why I ended up with such a high fiber and protein intake, and then a relatively low fat intake. Option number two, moving on, this is this is a little bit more of a, of a standard day of eating for me. We have 171 grams of protein, 376 carbs, and 94 grams of fat, totaling just over 3,000 calories. So guys, that is it. That is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, because legit, it took like two weeks to finish this one. Uh, this video is definitely a bit more of a project than uh, my normal full day of eating videos are, so if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go pass out for a while. Again, my course, The Skinny Fat Solution, is on sale right now, but for three days only, and on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video. This guy's like the meme king, huh? He for sure is like on 4chan, 100%. Um, interesting, skinny fat solution. Um, yeah, I mean, I like he looks good, obviously natural. Um, I don't like all of these like how to get ripped books and, and programs and stuff. I mean, I guess they're good if you're just starting out. Like they're they're probably good if you're just starting out. I'm just like I I honestly I'm I'm so far removed from that that like honestly any program is good if you actually do it right. Uh, his is good. Fucking buy any program if you actually follow it, it's good. Uh, what I've seen from this one video in terms of nutrition, I mean that's 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 pretty good. I'm I'm like I'm actually like impressed that he's eating 90% actual natural foods that are healthy. He got the raw honey and the he's like done stuff I haven't even thought of like um, the no sugar fruit preserves, which seems obvious. I just it never like occurred to me. Um, yeah, so interesting, good, cool. Uh, yeah, thank you for telling me to do this guy. If you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers, let me know. Peace.